everyone, I want to uh, review in a demonstration the process for receiving money. I'm going to have to do this in the Bellwether Garden Company since there's no real transactions in our little dummy company that we created at this point, the, the, that I created um, at this point. So right now we're in customers and sales and generally when you're, you have customers, you're provi providing a service of some kind to them and you invoice them. So once you provide the service and it's done and you invoice them, at some point between, I guess, 10 to 30 days you receive cash payment for those services. So we're gonna go. We're gonna assume that we've created, um, that we've provided a service. We created an invoice, and we are we are now in receipt of those funds. So I'm gonna demonstrate how to collect. If you notice on these little transactions here, um, they have these little drop-down boxes of little arrows that allow you to see the details. Now this is only because our dashboard um, is set up our tasks in this way, but generally you can. Uh, receive money, you can review, edit money, or you can accept credit cards. For our class here, accepting credit cards is not really particularly relevant because um, we have no access to internet and there's no interface between the internet and the Quick and the Peachtree software. Again, I apologize for saying QuickBooks, but I'm teaching both the QuickBooks and the Peachtree and they are so much, um, they're very similar um, in um, process. But anyway, we're going to receive a money from a customer, and because I'm using Bellwe Bellwether Garden Supply, I'm going to have to sort through and see which one of the customers that they have actually have a balance that we can actually um, apply payments to. So, based on my screen here, I think I'm going to use um, Aldred Builders. So I'm going to use them. So I'm going to click on there. So we're going to receive money. I'm going to give it a date of March 2015. I think that'll work. Let's see. So March the 15th. That's going to be the date. Ticket ID. And it's asking for a date. I, I mean, ticket ID. The ticket ID can be anything. It really doesn't matter. Um, you could even use the date, which is 031515. Um, I'm using my tab key, as you know. I'm going to use a drop-down box here, which is a little hourglass. And I'm going to select the vendor, or the customer in this case, and it's going to be Aldred. So I'm saying OK. Now, I'm going to just be using my tab key to click through. Now, the first thing is the check number. And again, this is a demonstration. It's not really particularly relevant to your, um, your project, but it does give you the steps that you'll need to follow. So don't worry about the actual check number. It will be given to you in your packet. I'm just using uh, some fictitious information. And the receipt number can be the same or different. Um, and, it, and the receipt number really is the check number. It, it really is. If you want to be able to, to research something that's being paid by a customer, you're going to look at the check number because that's the only thing that really makes sense and that's useful. So I'm going to use the same number here. And the date, obviously, the date and the ticket ID are going to be the same. So I'm going to click on and choose the amount of pay. Now right here where it says receipt amount, I'm not going to put an amount here. I'm going to let the system calculate what we're going to pay. And if you look down at the bottom, you see two tabs. One is going to be applied to invoices and one is applied to revenue. If there were no invoices outstanding for this vendor and, it wanted, and you wanted to apply these funds directly to your general ledger or revenue account, you can do that. But we don't want to do that. We want to apply um, our payments to particular invoices that are outstanding. So we look like it looks like we have one invoice that is actually due around the time of this particular um, cash receipt. So we're going to pay only that, which is the five thousand four hundred and twenty-six dollars. To do that, we just click on pay. If we wanted to pay a portion of that, we can do that just by changing the amount in this field. We just put our, our cursor right in this in the amount field and we can change the amount. We can even put a description here. Um, and I'm going to put a description just so you can see all of the wonderful things you can put in and, and use for reporting. So I'm going to say payment of invoice um, as services are complete. You don't have to, to do this, but I'm just letting you know that you can make um, provide descriptions when you put in your cash receipts. Now, some customers you have 
3% if you pay within a certain amount of time um, or 2% discount. This particular customer does not have a discount and probably did not pay within the, the terms. So the discount is going to be zero and I just want you to see that. Now we put this information in, we feel good about it, the amount automatically defaults to the receipt amount of 5426 It looks good. The payment method obviously is a check. We could use cash, American Express, Visa, um, debit card, etc. But we're not going to be using those options because we are in a demonstration mode and the check is probably the best way to do it. Now, we are done with this transaction. It looks good. The main thing I think here is to make certain that you are going to, you're hitting the correct account, the correct checking account. And the drop down box gives you a list of the checking accounts that you have in place, pay cash and pay over in one of them, but we don't want to put the money in that account. We're going to put it in our regular checking account. So once we are done that, we hit the save key and then we are done. Now, once we've um, received money and we applied money, I want to run a report to show what I have done. So I'm going to look at reports, and I'm going to go to accounts receivable, and I'm going to go to customer payment. Let's see, cash receipt journal. And I'm going to run a report, but I'm only going to run it for that customer that I received money for. I just don't want to see everybody else. I just don't care. Um, so I'm going to do customer ID, and I'm going to select the individual company. So I'm going to say um, Alfred. And in either way it will work. If you would put it in the range, you could even say here, Aldred. A Aldred to Aldred. Both work. And once you do that, you click on OK. And OK is going to be at the bottom of the screen. And you run the report. It gives you the payment that was made from Aldred. Um, and the date and all of the information. Once you've done that, you can send this information to me email, but I would rather you just download it into Excel as you did everything else. We're going to click on to it. We're going to put it into a new spreadsheet and you download it. Again, I don't think the printing capabilities will be working here. Again, if it asks you a question like this, just ignore it. No, you don't want gold mine right now. It's just not really relevant. So click on no and move on. But now here is the file that you created. Don't modify it. Just show that oh, the main thing here is we just want to make certain that you create the information in QuickBook in the Peachtree and then you have um, generated the report. So let me go back into my process into my company and now we've received money we generated a report to show that we received money and now we're done we have now created a transaction a cash receipt from our customer let's try working on paying a bill now again I'm gonna click on vendors and purchases because that's where we pay our bills and I'm gonna click on pay bills right in this area now it gives you an option pay a bill write a check um, either way is going to give us the same thing, but I'm going to do uh, pay a bill and show you how that works. And when you pay a bill, you'll have to tell it who is going to be paid. And let's see, um, let's see, before I get involved in this, let's see who is outstanding. We've got a couple, we have a number of vendors that are outstanding that have an, um, a balance. So I'm going to use add me. So right now I'm going to say pay bills. And I'm going to use Adney as my vendor to pay. And using my tab key, now we're going to pay Adney and Associates. I'm going to put the check number. Now, if you are generating checks and the system is printing them out, a process will be a little bit different, but we're not going to do that because we can't print the checks. So we're going to just manually tell, tell the system what the check number is instead of it actually calculating and giving us the check number. So I'm going to use a fictitious check number. And again, I'm going to stay with my dates, 315. I'm going to use 316 as my date. And I'm going to tab. Now, um, again, this is going to be important for you to note. Make certain your cash account is correct, and it looks like it's okay, the regular checking account. Now that we see an outstanding item here, we're going to apply it directly to that, that payment to that invoice. But if we didn't have an invoice outstanding, we could still pay this person, just apply it directly to the expense. And by doing that, it fills in the payee amount, the dollars, etc. 
If you want to put any additional information in this memo section, which will probably appear on your check, which it probably looks like it'll be the invoice number, you can play, change that. Or you can change, thank you. You can actually inc put information about the payment, payment of account bell 005. And again, this is only going to be showing within your general ledger, not going to be shown on the stub. What shows up on a stub is going to be something like this area here. It would show up if we were to print this out. So if we have paid an outstanding bill and it looks like it's coming from the right account. So now we're going to save. And once that is done, we can close. Now, we want to run a report to show what we've just paid. So going to reports in the same area, we're going to do a cash disbursement journal. But this time with the journal, we're going to click options because we're going to select only the bill that we just paid. The period of time is fine. Um, we could even change it to say the exact date that we just paid and that was the 16th of March 2015. I'm going to change that too. Now, we want also to limit it even more by doing what? Saying the vendor. And I'm going to select the vendor just so that I can show that that's the only one I want to see. And now, here it is. That's the only one that I want to see. And here's the transaction. So, instead of us printing this out, we're going to download it as we've done before. And let the system give us a nice, wonderful check register showing only the check that we just generated. So, I'm going to go back to Bell Weather. And now we like to main screen. So we have done two things in this demonstration. We have received our cash from our customer and we have paid our invoice, an outstanding invoice. If you have any questions about this process, please put them in your Q&A section of the discussion board. I suggest watching this video tutorial over and over until you feel comfortable um, when you're ready to put the transactions in on your um, new company. Thank you very much for listening and I will talk to you soon.